A one, a two, a one, two, three. Wow, it ran out with Minima, people. This is Petro Rabbit or Purple Rabbit, and you're looking at Space Haven. Welcome back, and if not, well, I was saying welcome back because this is the last of four videos, advanced guides about Space Haven. And um, it's just about right that I left uh, this topic for last. It's where the topic at hand is uh, power or electricity or energy consumption, whichever you prefer. Um, so I've loaded into an old game to find a ship that would help us see what we're talking about or visualize. Now this ship is, is long and presents some problems in bringing the energy from one spot to another. And this helps us talk about different issues about energy production. So the first thing about energy is that it will change a lot during your game in different periods. You've got four generators. At the beginning of the game, you'll be given the uh, energum power generator, which use energy uses directly energum crystals. After that, you have the X1, the X2, and the X3, which are all in turn more performing than the previous one in terms of uh, how much energy they give you for your buck. So as you can see, the X1 gives you 15 power, let's call it like that, for 0 0.02. The next one will give you for the same amount, 25. The next one will give you 40 for the exact same amount of uh, energy rods. So to produce your energy rods, you're going to need, uh, where is it? It's not there. It's not, oh, there it is. Uh, energy refinery, and we'll get to that. But as we're still talking about the energy generators, the first one, your game is going to change a lot in, in terms of how much energy you consume and how you consume it and how much you need and blah, blah, blah. But uh, if you're still on the energy and power generator and you're still using energy and crystals uh, after that you you want to try and get to the and you're having energy problems and your first solution will be that to try and get the x1 power generator the x2 and the x3 and you can find these if you go under your research okay, so here you're going to have to go basic x1 power generator here after that you get the x2 which to you require optics so that's basically the second tire of specialized research and then the x3 so if, if your first problem is, is energy and you're still not using one of those generators, that's the first thing you should be doing. Another very important thing, and one of the first things you will be doing once you have your powerful or more performing generators, is having to refine your energy. So this tool has a function of transforming minerals, both energum and hyperium, into energy rods and hyperfuel. So the hyperfuel is consumed by your warp drives and uh, the energy rods are consumed by different things you'll need them for several things in the game aside from your energy generators they can be used by your hypersleep chambers and you need them to make uh, fuel for your shields and uh, for your energy turrets as well so energy cells you're gonna have to transform the minerals into the second item that is required before you input it into both your energy generator and your warp drives. Uh, this is a task in logistics that will keep your, your population busy constantly. So the important thing to do here is to, by the way, set it on continuously, production of both, because you're going to need these two items continuously during your game. It's pointless to keep telling it to produce some every once in a while. Just tell them to produce them when there is less than. That's what I did. Less than 41 means you're going to start producing more. But keep this, the refinery, as close as possible to where you then need the energy. So basically next to your energy generators. Or even better, next to both the energy generators and the uh, hyper drives. You can, if you remember from the first video guide I've made, you can, if you haven't seen it, anyways, you can go to your storage and tweak it to contain only the item you want. So the way you do this is you select everything, then you tell it not to take anything, then you go back on the item you want and you tell it to bring it here. You can do this also with this. So now at this point we will have energy rods and uh, hyperfuel only stored in this, uh, in this storage. Uh, 
it's close to both where they're needed as you see so if you haven't looked at this or you don't understand what this map is you have uh, two options this is it says three but ignore it of what kind of connections you can put between nodes and electricity so the first kind of node is this one and this is a bi-directional link i think that speaks for itself but that means that electricity can go this way and that way so it will walk back in and out again. You can choose with this other two buttons and but just to show you the difference, if this is the node you selected and you select this button, then it's gonna connect a connection that goes towards the next node. If you use the other button, it's just gonna, so starting from this one, it's gonna create a connection from the other node to it, which can be done in the same way by doing this. So it's just a, a different way of giving you an option of doing that. You can either choose a bidirectional way of doing things or you can actually decide what f which is the flow direction in which the energy is going so it doesn't come back and you're not losing energy bouncing up and down you see like in some places here it bounces up and down the solar panels can help you a bit in your early game if you're still using the first generator but don't go only solar power uh, even if it's a small ship you will be gimped in, in, in sectors where the solar output is inferior to 20% or 30%. This sector has a solar output of 84%, but some sectors can have as much as 30%. And if your ship is totally generated by solar energy, you're going to be stuck there. Yeah, it can spell disaster for your game if you just go solar panels. So use them in, in integrating what they do for your ship. And there's different ways you can actually use solar panels and we can illustrate a few but here we have them close to a generator you can use them to either to reduce your consumption of energy rods as in if you connect the solar panel to the generator and then the energy out that will provide free energy when when there's a high solar output and you won't be consuming energy rods your 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 people won't have to be keep you feeding the generator as much because a lot of the energy that it will be giving out is coming anyways from the solar generators. So another way is to push and help increase the amount of energy that a generator is, is giving out. And here I'm doing both these things. So especially if you have to push energy a far distance from where it's being produced, giving it an additional push is helpful. So additional speed, a way you can see here the energy and a way of determining if your ship is uh, energy is working or not is looking at this. It's I mean, there's different ways of doing this and there's no need to go into nuclear physics or actually real electricity. I think the, the main tool here at hand is distance and speed. So how do you get energy from here all the way to here and how much energy is consumed on the way? Now, an important point when it comes to making energy circulate is the fact that your energy nodes actually, let's get out from this picture now, so your energy nodes uh, store some energy. Now, wait, this, okay, so, so an energy node can store power capacity 25. So the floor one will store less than a wall one, which will store 50 energy, power node will store 150, and the power capacity node will store up to 1000. These are actual batteries, you're not using these to connect around the ship. You can talk about the power capacity nodes, uh, which are useful at moments in your game. Later on, I, I don't find them particularly useful. So this ship is, is bigger and has a larger energy consumption and it also has to distribute more energy in different places. So I've gone with more of a ricochet or a dynamo effect approach and I'll go into that but it doesn't really behave like electricity. So as far as you find a system that makes as efficient as possible your ship, you're fine. Your ship will have different energy requirements during your game, where you are in your game, if you have a ship somewhere above 10 and crew and 20, you won't have a lot of energy requirements, so you can rely fairly on both power capacity nodes and solar power as a way of uh, slowing down your consumption of the fuel required. And that will help you survive longer, go past uh, one of your first energy prices. But after that, be careful of 
how you use your power capacity nodes and once you have a big ship and you have and if you don't want to grow your crew too much you're like you're happy with the stable crew you have decided you want to stay with the crew of 20 and it works or something like that whatever if you want to build other ships or if you want to improve your ship you will need an industry section right unless you want to scavenge all those products but uh, industry obviously consumes more energy than you would normally use and another thing that consumes a lot of energy is is food production food production is more of a constant energy requirement while the industry is required only when of course you punch it in when you go in and have to make something your industry areas will require a lot more energy and you'll have blackouts when you're producing stuff because it's going to go above what you've been consuming so far so either you go and produce more energy produ production so more solar panels or whatever it is you want but otherwise you can place some capacity nodes near your industry areas and these will serve to momentarily prevent the blackouts that the, the industry peaks will cause through your ship the capacity nodes are useful early in the game when you're having energy crisis so you can store energy collected from solar panels and it will also help you with implementing during your high industry production phase in the game without having to make more generators but later on in the game it will slow down the speed at which your electricity will go around which can make it non-productive depending on what needs you have once you've built all your ships so you were not going to need uh, an industry anymore your, your energy nodes um, are less important in providing a solution to those energy bursts you want to especially because you're going to increment a lot if you want to grow your population your or food production you weren't going to want to have a stable energy supply a strong energy supply and the energy nodes are going to slow down the speed at which energy uh, electricity is, is distributed around. So also remember that, the, as we were saying earlier, the energy nodes are, are, um, are storing a little electricity. So, for example, every time you load into the game, it won't remember how much energy is stored into each node. So you'll have blackouts at the beginning of each new every time you load back into a game because all the nodes will be at zero of course don't take that as a parameter to change everything in your ship but what that means is it's going to fill up slowly a bit like a glass or like filling up many glasses one at a time there's going to need to be enough electricity and enough push to move through that storage to get to the places where you need it so for the further away places from energy any energy production are going to receive energy a lot slower than you expect it to before because before it gets there there's going to be energy stored in all the other nodes so while at the beginning you might be inclined to put a lot of nodes here and there at the end the less nodes you have the less energy is lost along the way and is flowing faster so uh, what i'm doing here is uh, going with the uh, rings here and I'm, I'm trying to store more energy so in certain places where you see that there's rings it's keeping the energy flow around there before it pushes it on to the next area and if there's enough energy there that means that there should be energy flowing all over continuously so of course this is going to be slowed down a lot as we said by capacity nodes but if we go to the other ship which should have a system more based on these rings think of it as a way of, of doubling the speed there's there's energy that is already going anyway in this direction from here to here to here to here but some of it here can be if it's not needed sent back here and then back into the same flow making this same flow more supplied with energy and giving it back speed so giving it back strength to keep having the same speed it has here than it has here and i'm also using solar panels in places to give back speed or energy or flow to the electricity in certain points where it's very far away from anything that gives it flow power whatever you want to call it energy but let's jump into another game where there's an even higher population so here i'm relying a lot less on solar power and i have basically no capacity nodes anywhere 
And the reason for this is I, I, I want energy to be pushed continuously. I have a very high requirement with this ship. There's a lot of burning of electricity everywhere, so I can't really afford to store it or lose it into a capacity mode. It's not about consuming less fuel. I have to basically keep having the fuel. I have enough, I mean, it's, it's not really a problem. But I stacked a lot on, on energy. So your supply is not a problem, the problem is to punch enough energy in the ship at the time it's required, and it's required all the time, so you keep, you need to keep punching in a lot of energy and to keep it flowing in all the places, so it's pointless having it very fast and supplied here if it never gets to the other corner down there. Um, let's speed this up, see if we can see some blackouts. Yeah, you saw some blackouts in the uh, sleeping area. These dormitories have a lot of oxygen production. Okay, I think this is uh, covers just about everything and all the phases that you need to you can go through in your game. Yeah, remember most of all to put your refinery close back to your generators. Otherwise, you'll be receiving blackouts because your energy re generators don't get their fuel. And you want to place them in places where your population finds them relatively close by. Another thing you can also do is go to uh, Overview and do a custom logistics priority and set it to highest. So there's people always producing energy and uh, put a storage right close to it and tell it to only keep energy minerals and hyperium and then put another storage and tell it to keep in second time all the energy energy rods anyways i hope that helps you with uh, the energy distribution in your spaceship i'll show you one more time how it works on this ship and i'll go and check it out on this ship which you've seen a previous version of this is how it looks now Not very different, but a bit optimized as well. Anyways, um, catch around. That was Petrol Rabbit. Uh, weep Grana, Weep Niniba.